What did you do today? Did you get out of bed? Did you kiss your partner goodbye? Did you shout at that jerk who held you up in traffic on the way to work? Whatever you've been up to, ask yourself this. How many of these things did you do because you wanted to? Because you mentally decided to? Not because you had to out of necessity, but because it was your will? The answer is none of them. According to some scientific studies, anyway. As we're about to find out in our list of four reasons why free will doesn't exist. At number four, it's a trick. The most obvious place to look for evidence of free will is, of course, the brain. Because you're not going to find it in your ass, are you? In the years since we've been able to accurately study the workings of the human brain, there have been many neuroscientific investigations into this idea to determine whether or not it exists. But according to most of them, it seems that free will is an illusion, and it's our sneakily old brains that are responsible for convincing us otherwise. In the 1960s, a team of German neuroscientists discovered that in the moment before your brain engages in consciousness awareness, it enters a special state, or, as they referred to it, a readiness potential. This was discovered when their subjects were asked to move their fingers, and EEG scans conducted on them found that there was some significant activity in the brain's motor cortex before the conscious part of the brain became active. This work was built on by Benjamin Libet in the 1980s, and he too found that the human mind prepares itself to act before the conscious decision-making part is aware, 0.35 seconds before, to be precise. It seems we are nothing more than our mind's meaty puppet. And recent fMRI scanning technology has shown this readiness potential to be even more influential than ever thought possible. Periods of up to 10 seconds have now been noted between subconscious levels of the brain making a decision and your conscious levels doing something about it. It's a lot like your mom asking you what you want for dinner. You may think you've got a choice, but this choice is an illusion, and there are only predetermined options available for you to choose from. It's mac and cheese again, kid. Deal with it. At 3. There's too much noise. How would you define the concept of free will? Is it the ability to act independently of external forces? Well, that definitely doesn't exist, as every day you are subjected to a barrage of influences from everyone and everything on the planet. Every one of your life experiences has shaped you in some way or another. So even if there is a part of your brain that is able to generate its own purpose and meaning from life, these purposes and meanings will have been heavily influenced from the world around you. For a start, think of all the various psychological manipulation techniques we've covered on this channel before. Confirmation bias that makes you seek out information which confirms your beliefs. Anchoring bias that gives undue precedence to the first piece of information you receive. Then there's distinction bias, repetition bias, the difference principle. There are so many ways to manipulate the human mind, and so many people consciously and subconsciously using these techniques every day, that there's very little room left for free will to have any influence on your behaviors at all. But if we are being influenced every day by other people's actions, then surely we're guilty of doing this too. So. Is this not a form of free will? Eh, not really. Many of these cognitive biases are psychological tricks played on us by our own brains in order to make us feel better. And these processes are mostly subconscious. For example, it's hard to hold two separate ideas in our mind at once, so the mental stress of this cognitive dissonance is alleviated by our brains subconsciously choosing one idea over another. Just imagine how many times this might have happened in your lifetime. Your brain might have chosen one brand of cereal over another, one lover over another, one political belief, one career, one philosophy, or one whole life goal over another, 
And the crazy thing is, your conscious brain had nothing to do with these decisions. At 2. Emotions Let's play devil's advocate for a moment and say that free will does exist. And even within the maelstrom of events, people and circumstances your brain has to cope with, that somehow it still manages to generate and process independent thought. Okay, fine. But where do these thoughts come from? Because the things we do, the things we desire, and the actions we take to get them are entirely driven by the chemical makeup of our brain. As we discovered in our recent video on the four human emotions that control you, your personality is defined by a series of chemicals. Chemicals that generate fear, anger, happiness, and sadness in certain regions of the brain. Regions which in turn determine your approach to individual situations. How you act and react is how we define your personality. And this unique identity is apparently where free will is derived from. However, the levels of your brain's chemicals can be manipulated. So how can free will exist when our minds are so easy to control and subdue? And since we know that your brain's chemical makeup can also be heavily influenced by your genetics, this means that you're also living a life whose direction has been partially decided by things that happened before you were even born. And this would be true even if you were transplanted onto another planet light years away, because your lifetime's desires and goals have been determined already by your genetics. So if that is all that free will is, just a random assortment of chemicals and gray matter, then surely what we perceive as conscious intentions and thoughts are merely a series of outdated evolutionary responses to the world around us. The only will our brains have isn't free, it's the will to survive, to fight, to feed, and to fornicate so that we and our species may continue. That's not free will. That's just getting by. Of course, your view of this point may be different if you believe that human beings possess some sense of self beyond what we've observed in the brain. There's no evidence for anything like a soul or other form of human essence existing. But if it did, it seems that this would be the only way human free will could possibly exist, until we discover human souls are manipulated by dark matter, or toasters, or something. And at number one. We haven't evolved. If free will doesn't exist, then why do we humans have consciousness at all if we're nothing but slaves to our biological makeup? Why haven't we just evolved into zombies who shuffle around existing and nothing else? I guess you could say that we have in a way, with our jobs, dinners, and nap times defining pretty much everything we do. But over time, humans have broken the cycle and begun to think outside of our basic needs enjoying non-essential pastimes such as stamp collecting, line dancing, and sharing of dark memes. So, this presents us with a question. Is free will a static concept? Or is it fluid? Is it something human beings are developing gradually, much like consciousness? This idea isn't mere conjecture because when the concept of readiness potential was discovered, it was also realized that humans have developed a kind of veto on our subconscious decisions. This has been confirmed in recent years with a paper called The Point of No Return in Vetoing Self-Initiated Movements, a paper that revealed that humans have a certain cutoff point in the decision-making process, after which our conscious mind has little or no influence. The aforementioned study, which was published in the heftily titled Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences of the United States of America, concluded that human actions can only be cancelled 200 milliseconds or more before the onset of the movement. Basically, there are a series of steps where your brain processes information and decides what is best to do in any given situation, and while your brain may trick you into thinking you've made this choice consciously, at the end of this process, you do get to have your say, if you're sharp enough. So it seems likely that some kind of learned awareness may be required to generate the ability to overcome our subconscious influential biological responses. And while we're currently intelligent enough to conceive of free will, 
perhaps we're simply yet to develop brains capable of enacting it. So this begs the question, how far are we down the road towards true free will? And what will we do when we find it? And that's our list. But if you're interested in learning more about the human mind and our purpose in the universe, then take a look at our recent video on the five most puzzling questions of humanity. And yes, for the 10,123rd time, we know some bozo spelled consciousness wrong in the thumbnail. Jeez, forgive us. We're only human after all.